So to me, prayer is my relationship with God out loud, basically. I remember growing up praying to the Lord, and there was just an awakening in my life that I wanted to pray with God. And that really changed the way I pray. It was like a paradigm shift. I've been known to be walking with friends, and they'll look over at me and say, are you praying? Well, heck yes, we're talking about something where we need the power of God in our lives. To me, that's about praying with your eyes wide open. So when I think of praying with ears wide open, it's being settled enough in my life to be present to my circumstances, to see something that strikes me, to throw it to the Lord, and then to hear what He has to say about it. And that's just one way we start to get to pray with God instead of to God. Oh Lord, it's an amazing privilege to be able to pray for both Kevin and Sherry and for this congregation. Lord, we thank you for the word that you've given to them. We thank you for the word that's on their heart. And Lord, as each of us sit and listen today, I pray that you would begin the paradigm shift of praying to you to praying with you. And Lord, that's praying with our eyes, it's praying with our ears, but mostly, Lord, it's praying with a surrendered heart to you. Bless this time in your word. Bless this time as we gather together that we glorify you in one body. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, wait a minute. She was praying with her eyes open. Is that allowed? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you're going to pray all day long, you got to have your eyes open a part of the time. Today, we're going to talk about praying with our ears open, and I've got some uh, noise-canceling headphones. These are powerful. These are amazing. If you're on a plane, and there's a crying baby near you, and it's not your baby, uh, if it's your baby, keep these off. You want to hear them. But if it's not your baby, you put these on, and it's just Wonderful. If you're, if you're gaming, these are wonderful. If you're, if you're in a noisy environment, you need to focus, these are wonderful. But if you're driving in a car heading towards a cliff and you have these on, and someone's screaming at you, you're not going to hear them and pew, you're in trouble. There's environments you don't want to be wearing noise-canceling headphones because you might miss things that aren't noise but important things. And that's really what life is like. We've got to learn to keep our ears open, to hear what God has to say because God is speaking to us. Listen to these words that David wrote in Psalm 143. First, he begins talking about how God hears him, and he says this, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. God, I know you hear me. But in verse 8 of Psalm 143, it switches, and he talks about how he can hear from God. Look at verse 8. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. Let me hear. Lord, remind me, speak to me, tell me you love me in an unfailing manner. For I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go. God, direct me, guide my steps. For to you I entrust my life. Oh God, we pray today you'll open our eyes to see you and our ears to hear you. God, help us to understand that you are speaking. Teach us that we might hear you more. We pray in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to the God who listens and listen to the God who speaks. This is praying with ears wide open. When I was a young girl in the church, one of my favorite hymns was in the garden. And the chorus went like this. It spoke of Jesus. And he walks with me and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And through the years, I discovered that there were many Christians who longed for that kind of relationship with Jesus, this walking and talking. Frank Bookman, born in 1878, was one of those Persons. And he became a pastor at age 24, and he really wanted to make a difference in the world. But it wasn't until he had a friend suggest something to him, which he would later call his radical procedure. And that was to get up every morning early, and after spending time in the Word, to sit quietly with a pad of paper and a pencil and ask God to speak to him about what 
God wanted him to do that day. That was his radical procedure. He went on to be the leader of the Oxford movement, and he actually influenced those who started Alcoholics Anonymous. God honored him coming to him every morning and saying, Lord, what do you have for me today? In 1935, he was speaking to a crowd, a crowd of people, 10,000 people in Denmark, and this is what he said about prayer. We accept as commonplace a man's voice carried by radio to the uttermost parts of the earth. Why not the voice of the living God as an act of creative force in every home, every business, every parliament? The Holy Spirit is the most intelligent source of information in the world today. He has the answer to every problem everywhere. When men will let him, he is teaching them how to live. And Bookman went on to say, divine guidance must become the normal experience of ordinary men and women. Any man can pick up divine messages if he will put his receiving set in order. Definite, accurate, adequate information can come from the mind of God to the minds of men and women. This is normal prayer. The issue is not is God speaking, the question is, are we listening? Do we let God's word shape us? And are we listening to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Kevin and I uh, lived in Byron Center for over 20 years where we raised our three boys. And uh, one day I got a call from my mom. And she said, hey, Sherry, they're going to be moving Aunt Zelma to a hospice center right by your house. My mom was thrilled because she lived a distance away and she knew that I would be there for Aunt Selma. When I got off the phone, I just, like I do, I just started talking to God and I said, oh God, I am so glad that I can minister to Aunt Selma because she has been such a, a light for me in my whole life. And so this was a great opportunity. So I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I really want to make a difference for her in these last days. And so I went about my business, and the first time I stopped in to visit her, when I went to the room, there were so many caregivers in the room that I thought, well, I'll just come later. So I, I left, and I came another time. The next time, I checked in with the front desk, went to her room, but she wasn't even in her room at the time. So I thought, well, I guess I'll try again another time. The third time I come into the center, I uh, check in, I go to the room, and she has one visitor. And now I'm thinking, okay, this is my third time. This is a bit ridiculous. But So I listen to see if maybe I could just walk in on that visit and become a part of that. And my heart was, I wanted, to, I wanted to have some time with her. As I was listening, I found out that this was her pastor, and they were planning her funeral. I knew it wasn't right for me. I left, and as I left, I started to talk to God. I said, boy, God, I am really missing this one. And I said, can you please help me? You know my heart. I just want to be there. I want to help Aunt Zelma. She had lost her husband and two of her three children, so she just had one son that was there for her. Anyways, a couple of days go by, and I'm in line at the dry cleaners. It's 4.30 in the afternoon, and I feel an impression on my heart that I should go visit Aunt Zelma. Now, sometimes I know that the Holy Spirit is working because I hear myself talking back. This was one of those moments. And I heard myself say, well, now is not really a good time. I have to make dinner. <laughs> and I realized by my thought that it was God stirring me. So to be considerate of my family, I called Kev and I said, hey, Kev, would it be okay if we were late on dinner? This is kind of what's happening. He goes, absolutely, go ahead. I walk into the care place. I talk to the lady at the front desk, and she says, are you, are you a relative? And I said, yeah, actually, I'm a niece. And she said, oh, I am so glad you're here. Um, Zelma has taken a turn for the worse, and we cannot get a hold of her son. I said, well, I am here, and I will stay for." how long I need to stay. I moved into the room with her. The hospice nurse was already on one side of the bed. She was fully aware. She knew I was there. We sat for two hours. As she got near the end of her life, and we, and we knew it was, it, was, it was ending, I had been reading some psalms, but as I watched her, her breathing start to lessen, I said a prayer to God. I said, God, what, what psalm? I knew she loved the psalms. God, what psalm? And, and just to my mind came one of my favorite ones, and I thought, well, I'll just read that. So I started reading Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And when I got done reading that, I looked up and she breathed her last breath and quietly moved in to the kingdom with God forever. A couple of days later, I was at the funeral. The pastor walked up to the podium and he started the message about her life and the celebration and said, it was very difficult to pick one passage because Zalma Remersma loved God's word and she had so many favorites, but I believe that she would want this one. Guess what it was? Psalm 27, he began, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I realized again, just the power of living this life, trying to hear, trying to do the best that we can to respond. I have found, I don't have lots of experiences like that, but those experiences propel me to want to hear more from God. And I try to tune in even more. You see, the beauty of praying with our eyes open, keeping those ears open, attentive to God, is that we can have this ongoing conversation with God at any time, any place, and God can use us for his glory. Yeah. What Sherry's talking about is this process of listening for the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit, of knowing that God speaks, God prompts, God, God nudges, and then learning to respond to that. And here's the reality. God speaks in many ways. We need to learn to listen and notice and respond. The problem is not a lack of God speaking. The problem is headphones and distractions and all kinds. There's other, lots of reasons. And, and we've got to understand that God, God wants to speak to his children. If a loving heavenly father cares about his daughters, he's talking to them. If he cares about his sons, he's talking to them. And that's what God's doing. We need to learn to pay attention. So God speaks, like Sherry was talking about, through the still, small voice of his Holy Spirit. If you're a note taker, there's a place to write down some other ways, and you'll notice that God speaks. Here's the next one. Through the Bible. God's spirit-breathed word. This book is God's word. God's breathed truth. And we need truth in our crazy world today. Oh, how we need God's truth. Listen to these words from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All the good things you want to do can be propelled forward through the word of God. I hope you believe that. I hope you're committed to this book. I, I hope that you, if you don't know where to start, on our, in our bulletin every week and on our website, we have a daily reading guide that gives you a daily reading that gets you ready for next Sunday's message. And if you're not sure where to start, start there. I'm in 2 Corinthians right now in my personal, I, I do my time reading the Bible first thing in the morning, and I'm in 2 Corinthians, and every single day, God tells me something. God speaks to me as I read his word. Sometimes it's a conviction. And I'm not like looking for it, maybe not even wanting it, but God's like, hey, Kevin, notice this, and there's this challenge but I gotta choose to respond. Sometimes it's a word of blessing and encouragement. But go to the word of God. Open this book every day of your life and God will speak to you. God speaks through the still small voice of the spirit. He speaks through the Bible. He also speaks through people, people of all sorts. All through the Bible, God's speaking through people. Peter gets up and preaches at Pentecost. Now we read it now and that's, and that's scripture, but he's inspired by the Holy Spirit and he preaches and 3,000 people come to faith. He's moved by the Spirit of God. All through the Bible, there's examples of people speaking that God is speaking through. But in our life today, God still does that. Sherry and I have a couple of couples in our life that when we need direction in our lives, we'll call and ask them to pray and share what God puts on their heart. And I can't tell you how many times <laughs> God has spoken through those wise people. God's used them to speak truth to us. About nine and a half years ago, I was helping Shoreline Church in the process of organizing some things as a church as Pastor Howie was looking at transitioning out and I was helping Shoreline Church find a new lead pastor. Did you know I did that nine and a half years ago? <laughs> and so I came out about every six weeks and every time I'd come out, I'd do some 
training and preaching, and a couple people in the church would say, hey, you should be our new pastor. And I'd say, well, I've got a three-year commitment where I'm writing these books on organic outreach. I'm starting this organization. I'm trying to get this stuff together, so I, I can't right now. And every, I come back again, and people say, Yo, you should be our pastor. And I say, yeah, thanks. Well, then finally, I had lunch with Pastor Dennis, and this is maybe a year into the process, and we're sitting there having lunch, and Pastor Dennis is, is a gentle person, but he looks at me, and he says, you know, he says, uh, we know you're coming to be our pastor. <laughs> He said, we'll, we're, we'll just wait until God tells you. <laughs> I'm like, this is, is this true, D? Yeah. And I'm like, you, at that point, you either punch somebody or you listen, right? And so I didn't punch him. And you go, you know, who are you? You're telling me. But I'm like, wait, no, that, I think that's the Lord. I, went, I, I told Sherry, and we prayed some more. And over the coming months, God, God showed. And you know, there's nowhere in the Bible that says, Kevin Garth Harney, go become the pastor of Shoreline Church on this date. You have to wait. That's the Holy Spirit leading. But God spoke through Dennis in the process. God speaks by his spirit. He speaks through the Bible. He speaks through people. He speaks through circumstances. He opens and closes doors. Read the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, as the early church leaders are going to certain towns, sometimes it says, you know, the door was closed. And, and we were, you know, the, the spirit kind of closed the doors and the opportunities, and they didn't go there. Or God opened doors and opportunities. When Sherry went to visit her Aunt Zelma, the first time she came, she looked and she said, I, I think the door's closed. I, I want to care for her, but she noticed that closed door. The next time, the door's closed. The next time, the door's closed. But that, that fourth time, the spirit leads, and the door's open. Now listen closely. When you sense God closing a door on something, don't kick it in. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if God's closing, you're saying, oh, that's okay, Lord, I trust you. But sense God's leading through circumstances. And then also, surprising supernatural ways. God speaks in surprising, amazing, supernatural ways through dreams and visions. In the Bible, God spoke through angels, through dreams, through visions. And some people are like, well, God doesn't speak that way anymore. Well, who, who says who? Last time I checked in the Bible, it says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. And if God wants to speak through a supernatural way, guess what? God can do what he wants to do, amen? amen. And, and so, so I'll tell you, like for me, dreams... I've never had a dream that I think was, I, I don't almost remember any dream. I mean, I can't remember like five dreams in my whole life. I sleep hard, I wake up, I'm ready to go. I don't know if, I might be dreaming, but I don't remember. Um, in all my life, I only think I've had one, what I would call a vision, but I had a vision one time. I was younger in my faith. I was worshiping in this high school in your Belinda. Uh, you, know, you know those basketball benches that go against the wall and then they push the button and they go click, 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 click out. They're real uncomfortable wooden benches. Sitting on one of those uncomfortable wooden benches, singing songs of praise. I was sitting down at that point while we were singing. And, and as clearly, more clearly than I could see you now, I didn't see you with my eyes, but in like my, the heart, the eyes of my heart or whatever it was, I'm sitting there and I had a vision of Jesus. And he came to me and he washed my feet. Just like he washed Peter's feet and Judas's feet and Thomas's feet in John 13 at the Last Supper. And, 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 I, and, I, and I began to weep. I'm not a big crier. I just began to weep. And, it, and God just said to me quietly in my heart through that vision, I love you that much. I've served you that much. It was transformational. I've only had one of those, but God spoke. God is still speaking. The still, small voice of his spirit. Through the scriptures, open the Bible, read it through people, through circumstances, through supernatural means. The key is we've got to learn to pay attention. God is the same Yesterday, today, and forever, do you believe this? Amen. From the opening verses in the very first chapter of the Bible, God was speaking. We read, and God said, let there be light, mm -hmm. and there was light. With these words, God began to speak all things into existence, and he continued to speak all the way through the scriptures. Even as we turn to the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22, we have Jesus speaking, still speaking to us. It says, he says, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You see, from beginning to end, the scriptures reveals a God who speaks, engages, communicates with his creation and leads us because he loves us. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, 
and forever. And so God is still speaking today. We are told that we are like sheep. In John chapter 10, verse 4, we read, his sheep follow him because they know his voice. The sheep recognizes the voice of the good shepherd. Praying with ears wide open is about walking in the truth of this passage. I've developed just some simple guidelines to uh, help people to kind of walk in this understanding of what it might look like to pray with your ears open. And so I have five simple guidelines that I would like to share with you. The first one is to sit quietly. To be intentional, to take some time, like Frank Bookman did, take some time out of each day and just sit, whether it's five minutes or however long you want to, but intentionally removing the distractions and just saying to God, Lord, if you have something you want to say to me, I am listening. The second thing is as you sit, and, and if you want to do uh, what Frank did and have a piece of paper and a pencil and write down some things that come to your mind, the second thing you have to do is you have to consider the source of these things that you're writing down or that you believe God may be speaking to you. And I think there's three options. It's either the Holy Spirit speaking to you, or it's yourself, or it's Satan. Now that may be hard to hear, but the scriptures are very clear that we are to be alert and sober because the enemy prowls around like a, luring, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That's 1 Peter 5, 8. And then in John 8, 44, the Bible tells us that the devil is a liar, and he is the father of lies. Yeah. That means he can lie to you. So you wanna make sure that you're living and walking in the truth. So you identify the, the source. The third thing, and one of the ways that you can test if this is of God, is what I call the scripture test. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, it has to line up with yeah. scripture. If you think God is calling you to do something that doesn't line up with scriptures, God is not speaking to you. So the scripture test is very important. Whether you think God's speaking through circumstances, the still small voice of his spirit through people, whatever, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, you can know that this is not the Lord's will. And then my fourth guideline is that you would experience some measure of peace, and I call it spiritual peace, because when we are in his will and we're walking alongside of him, he promises that we will have his peace. Now, I want you to know, though, that what I've experienced is sometimes you can have peace in the midst of challenge. You can have peace in the midst of sorrow. When God called Kevin to come here as a lead pastor, he let us know that we were leaving the place we loved. That was hard. And we have a, a story about how God spoke to each one of us separately. And when I realized it was God, I wept. Because I knew that we were moving on from the place that we had served for over 15 years. And it was difficult for me. But there was some sense of peace. I knew it was God. And then finally, and most importantly, that you would submit and obey. If you want to hear from God and keep hearing from God, start obeying. Mm -hmm. Follow the leading. Obedience is the fruit of your conversation. Yeah. It was interesting. I actually was able to teach these guidelines for one of the first times to uh, a group of women at Shoreline a few years back. And when I was working on developing how what I did for myself to hear God more because I've been on a journey. I used to not hear God speak. And um, so I was working on this and I was, in my I was in our living room and then it occurred to me that I'm gonna be teaching these women to do these steps and I wasn't presently at that time really taking time to sit and just ask God to speak. So I put my notes to the side and I said to Lord, Lord, I... I I want to live out what I'm teaching, so I'm just going to be quiet before you. If you have something you want to say to me, I'm here, I'm listening. I sat for a while, I didn't hear anything, I didn't jot anything down, and I was okay with that. 
But all of a sudden, I started just kind of looking at the paintings in our living room. And we have a couple of paintings in our living room. They've been in our living room for years. And they are done by a student that we had oh, 30 years ago in youth group. And he would paint these pictures and he would give them to us as a gift. So I'm looking at the big one above the fireplace. But then my eye is drawn to the one in the corner. And this is really, I, we hung this like seven years ago. But I was looking at it and then I realized something. Oh my goodness. I think that's the lone cypress. And it was. I went over there. I took, the, I took the back off to find out if it was the lone cypress. I realized in that moment that God was speaking to me by alerting to me this picture that had actually been in my house for 30 years. Every house had this picture. I didn't know it was the lone, cy the, the, the lone cypress tree. And so it was that moment that God spoke to me saying, Sherry, I have your life in my hands. I knew you were headed there years ago. You can trust me. As we learn to listen to God, as he speaks in many different ways, we grow in our confidence that our lives are in his hands. So if God's speaking by the still small voice of his spirit, if God speaks through his word, if God speaks through people and circumstances and supernatural ways, if God really is speaking, the question becomes then, then why aren't we hearing him more? Are we living with an anticipation that we should hear from God? And so here's, here's some hindrances to hearing God speak. I think and as I go through these hindrances, some of you are going to say, oh gosh, that one's a hindrance for me. Some of you are going to say, all five of them are hindrances for me. No wonder I'm not hearing from God. But be honest and humble as you listen. The first one is unbelief. And that, that's just unbelief that you're not anticipating God to speak. It's not that you don't believe in God. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus. You just don't believe that God speaks that way. And I've met Christians who say, well, I don't think that God still speaks today. Uh, Sherry grew up in a, in a Christian home, in a Christian church. She loved Jesus. But, but she didn't, wasn't really taught to anticipate that God was going to speak to her. On our first anniversary, my parents gave us a night away at a hotel. And for us, we were so broke. It was like a thrilling thing to go into Los Angeles and go to a hotel. And in the morning... We kind of had our devotions, and we were talking about what God was teaching us. And I started sharing what I'd learned from reading the Bible and what the Holy Spirit was putting on my heart. And I was just talking about how God was kind of speaking and guiding me. And Sherry says, you know, you talk like, like God just talks to you and guides you. And I said, he does. And she says, well, I became a Christian at five years old. I've been a Christian longer than you, and God doesn't speak to me that way. And I said very sensitively, that's your fault. <laughs> that's what I said. Isn't that what I said? Because I'm a sensitive guy. And... Uh, this is, this is like, this is 32 years ago. I'm way more sensitive now. But um, don't laugh at that. That's mean. Um, but I said, that's your fault. And she said, what do you mean? I, and I said to her, do you expect God to speak? Do you expect to hear from God? Do you ask God questions and wait and listen? She said, no. I said, well, then start doing that. And now she hears God more than I do. So there you go. But, but she, would, she loved Jesus, but she, she, it wasn't an unbelief in God or Jesus. She just didn't believe that God still does that. I ask you, do you hear from the Lord? Do you read the scriptures and sense convictions from God or challenges from God? Do you, do you hear a whisper of God's spirit and God's nudging? Maybe sometimes it's a, don't do that. That's not who you're supposed to be. Or it's love this person. Or it's God saying, oh, how I love you. And you just feel filled with his love. Do you hear from God? Do you believe you'll hear from him? And then next, Hindrances to hearing God speak, busyness, and I would say busyness and distractions. I think sometimes we live as if we've got noise-canceling headphones on. And sometimes we literally have earbuds in our headphones on most of the time, but we get so busy and so distracted that we just don't ever slow down enough to listen. And our minds are so filled with stuff that we don't get quiet to listen to God. If you're super busy and super distracted and always plugged in, say, Lord, help me quiet down, settle down and focus and listen more. Here's a third hindrance to hearing God speak. A negative view of self. For some of you, some of you, you just, you look and say, the God of heaven would talk to me? No, he wouldn't talk to someone like me. Some of you don't know how deeply loved you are by God. How passionate he is about you. A good heavenly father talks to his kids, speaks to his kids. Do you believe that he loves you that much? Some of you grew up in a church tradition where you were told 
you can't talk to God. You come to a religious professional and you confess your sins and you tell the religious professional and they who are very holy will go talk to God for you and then they'll tell you what you have to do to make things right with God. But you don't come directly to God. Some of you were raised that way. Uh, Being humble in the fact there's different Christian streams of Christianity, I wanna say that's not biblical. Jesus Christ opened the way for you to come and talk to him anytime. And God the Father says, come on in. I am your Abba. Climb on my lap, talk with me, share with me, and I will talk with you. Do, do we actually understand that we can have the wrong view of God? And if we have the right view of God, we will be listening for his voice to speak because he's a loving father. For some people, they don't hear from God because they have an untrained ear. They just, you, you just haven't learned. I think for Sherry, that was part of it. She hadn't trained herself to recognize the voice of God. I think God was speaking to her. She just wasn't picking it up. And, and, and so imagine you meet somebody for the first time. You meet somebody for the very first time. Three days later, your phone rings, and you look, and there's a number you don't recognize. It's not in your system. But for some reason, you go, I'm just, it's, it's 831, it's local, and you hit it. And you say, hello? And, they say, and the person says this, it's me. And it's the person you met three days before, or you've only met once. And they throw down a, it's me at you. Like, you're like, who? Now, if Sherry calls me and throws down a, it's me, I know who it is, right? If, if Pastor Dennis calls me. It's me. That's okay. Pastor Nate. I, I know their voices. If I meet somebody once and they say it's me, I don't know who it is. I think that's where we start. Learn to recognize God's voice. He's a good shepherd. He speaks to you, his sheep. So each time you hear him and you respond, rec- oh, that's how God speaks to me. That's how God nudges me. That's how God whispers to me. That's how he convicts me through his word. That's what he sp- And just recognize to where when God says it's me, you go, oh, ready to go. What is it, Lord? Let, let's grow our ability to hear from God. And then finally, a sinful lifestyle. Sometimes we don't hear from God because we're running from God. We've turned our back on God and we're immersed in sin and we know it. And he's speaking, convicting, stop, don't do that, that's not what I want for you. And so so here's God and he's speaking to us and if we're turned facing him and listening, we're gonna hear him. But when we do this, turn our back to God and start walking away, guess what? We don't hear as well. You don't hear as well when you're walking the other direction. Or if we turn around and we're running the other direction, It's impossible to hear. So we do what the Bible says. The biblical word is repent. We stop and we turn around and stop running. I'm sorry for my sin. I turn from my sin. And we turn to face God and say, God, speak. I'm listening. God wants to speak to you. So here's what I want to invite us to do. I'm going to invite you to take 60 seconds and do what Frank Bookman learned to do, what Sherry's learned to do, and what Christians all through history have learned to do. You're going to see on the screen... Three questions. I want you to pick one of those questions. Let's go ahead and put those up on the screen. I want you to pick one of those, and I want you in this quiet moment to ask that question of God and listen quietly and say, God, help me hear. Speak to me. So you pick one. And maybe your first thing is, Lord, which question should I pick? Hmm. And let him prompt you. And then pray that prayer. And then we are gonna respond as we worship together. Let's take a moment of quiet and seek the face of God.